self-perception and self-concept. Self-identity is the attitudes and perceptions that people have about themselves, their abilities, and their self-worth. They form their self-identities from their values, life experiences, and interactions with others. People with good self-worth and high self-esteem will have strong personal values and believe in the ability to control their own lives. Those that have poor self-worth and low self-esteem usually have weak personal values and believe that they have little ability to control their lives and they view their lives as a negative experience and they have received negative feedback from other people. When we measure oneself against external standards, it can lead to a negative self-perception. We are usually more satisfied when we look internally for our self-worth. A negative self-perception or self-concept can come from feedback from others because it affects our perception of ourselves. People that feel capable of controlling what happens perceive things far differently from those that perceive no control over their lives. A negative self-concept can have a negative effect on health, and a loss of control results in depression, powerlessness, helplessness, and hopelessness, along with fear and anxiety, and they de it destroys their self-esteem. Actions that caregivers can use to help promote self-esteem include helping older adults find interests, activities, or hobbies, or even learning a new skill. Encouraging volunteering, social interacting, such as online communication and social media, and participation in social gatherings. Seeking guidance or mentoring from older adults and listening to their advice. Avoid talking down to older adults. Keeping older adults informed and encourage them to maintain control of their health. Improving self-esteem by taking control includes taking control of your attitude, being positive, thinking I can do rather than I cannot do, taking control of the health, leading that healthy lifestyle and maintaining regular physician and dentist appointments, taking control of your appearance, such as beauty shops, um, etc. Taking control of your time, being active and setting a schedule. Taking control of your social life and relationships. Calling family and friends and finding activities where you're with people. And taking interest in old and new activities. Aging individuals will develop their own perceptions of aging. Many older adults express dismay when they realize and can even identify a particular moment when they started perceiving themselves as old. Successful aging is not so much a matter of the years that they've lived or their health status, but rather a matter of perception and attitude. Level of self-esteem throughout life when older adults who have had a poor self-concept throughout their lives, they're not likely to gain self-esteem with aging. But older adults that had a healthy level of self-esteem during their younger days may experience some problems during aging, but usually those are going to be more as a result of societal attitudes. The extent of physical change Remember that physical, social, and emotional changes can diminish self-esteem. Any change in a client's ability to care for themselves are, is going to affect their self-perception and self-worth. Frequent and significant losses will threaten a perception of control. Emotional support system. Although losses of physical and functional abilities are damaging to self-worth, a loss of the emotional support of loved ones is even more devastating. Loss of loved ones also diminishes positive feedback that nourishes that self-worth. 
institutional placement can diminish self-worth because older adults are going to start feeling rejected and isolated or put away, particularly if the family does not visit often. With depression and aging, it's difficult to recognize because typical indicators might be similar to those that are seen with a variety of medical disorders. It may be related to a wide range of factors, including that loss of independence or loved ones, increased medical problems, or use of medications to treat a disease. We see, <clears throat> excuse me, if we see a sudden behavioral or personality change, that is not a normal part of aging. Warning signs of depression include noticeable changes in their mood, feeling distant from others with that flat or empty or anxious affect, changes in their energy level where they feel tired all the time but they have problems sleeping or maybe they sleep too much, difficulty carrying out daily activities for weeks at a time, troubles concentrating or feeling restless or on edge, irritability, anger or lashing out, increased worry or stress, or obsessing about minor problems or events, and heavy use of alcohol or drugs, a loss of interest in once pleasurable hobbies and activities, or sadness, hopelessness, crying, or suicidal ideation. Suicide and aging. With the older adult, it represents 13 to 15 percent of the U.S. population, but 18 percent of suicides. Older adults have a higher rate of successful suicide than older than other groups. 64 percent of older adults that commit suicide saw a health professional, usually within a month prior. Older adults are going to be less likely to communicate their intentions. If they start giving away prized possessions or have a loss of interest in daily activities, an unexpected weight loss, these are all possible suicide warnings. So question, successful aging has sometimes been described as mind over matter. When an older adult has a poor self-concept, fears and anxieties are going to begin to increase. As control over their life decreases, self-esteem plummets even lower, and older adults will fall victim to feelings of hopelessness and powerlessness, which lead to depression. And depression leads to isolation from others, further decreasing that sense of self-worth. People experience body image disturbances. They are more likely to refuse to look at or touch those affected body parts. In severe disturbances, the individual may deny that the changes even occurred and they act like nothing has even happened. They're likely to verbalize feelings of worthlessness and powerlessness. They may become preoccupied with body function. Our goals are going to be for the client to verbalize concerns regarding changes in their body appearance or function, identify their personal strengths, and acknowledge and look at the actual changes in their body appearance. Verbalize willingness to modify their lifestyle to accommodate physical changes. Demonstrate readiness to participate in therapy and use necessary assistive devices. Different interventions are going to include assessing the older adult's perceptions of their self, including their strengths and support systems, establishing that trusting relationship, providing care in a non-judgmental manner, and encouraging the person to look at and touch affected body parts. Focus on their abilities, not their disabilities. Assist them in selecting clothing or dressing 
in a manner that de-emphasizes the body changes and ensure that the person is carefully groomed and coordinate rehabilitative care with other departments. Body language with decreased self-esteem is going to be similar to those that have depression. They're likely to speak of themselves negatively. They may demonstrate extreme dependence on other people, be resistant to positive feedback, and they often avoid social contact. Our goals with these clients are for them to identify their personal strengths, express their feelings and concerns, and practice behaviors that promote self-confidence. We also, with interventions, want to explore feelings and concerns, demonstrate acceptance of older adults as people with value and self-worth, encourage participation in self-care activities, provide opportunities for reminiscence, encourage the family to participate in reminiscence by providing pictures or items that bring back memories of happy times, and encourage families to communicate positive feelings to that older adult. Fear is a feeling of dread or apprehension regarding an unidentified or an identified source. Most common fears that are identified in the older adult include fear of disruption of their lives or their routines, crime and victimization, a loss of loved ones, disease, injury, pain and suffering, a loss of independence, financial destitution, and loneliness. Our goals are going to have the client identify specific fears, identify coping strategies that were helpful in the past, and use strategies that help control their fear. Interventions include providing opportunities for the older adult to express their fear, reduce or remove the most common sources of fear, and provide explanations for all care procedures. Unsettled or uneasy feelings caused by a vague or identified threat can cause anxiety. Anxiety can be mild or moderate or severe. It can be acute or chronic. Mild anxiety can be good though, because it keeps people vigilant for hazards and it motivates them to seek health care. It also motivates them to take appropriate precautions. Goals include identifying methods that help reduce anxiety and experience fewer episodes of anxiety. Different interventions include encouraging those older adults to verbalize their thoughts and feelings, providing a quiet environment that reduces excessive stimulation, and provide distractions or diversions. People feel unable to solve problems or establish goals. These people can lose hope. They feel that they have no alternatives or choices, even when they actually can control what occurs. A hopeless person expresses feelings of complete apathy in response to their problems. So our goal is to have that client identify activities or interventions that promote hopefulness. Different interventions include visiting older adults frequently and spending time exploring the factors that contribute to feelings of decreased hope and assess the potential for self-destructive behaviors or suicide. A loss of power occurs when older adults feel that they've lost control of what happens to them. It may result from the loss of control of physical functions or body parts or from the loss of a body part. Feeling powerless is common with hospitalization or placement in an extended care facility. We want these, goal, uh, these clients to identify actions that they can exert control in. And we want them to make decisions and have input in the plan of care. 
Different interventions include allowing them to make choices whenever possible and encouraging them to do as much as possible for themselves. We need to adapt to their environment to encourage independent activity. Explain the reasons for any changes in the plan of care and allow them to be part of it if they can. Avoid being overprotective or directive and respect the older adult's right to refuse. One of the most common fears of the older adult is death. True or false? This is false. 